Greetings, friend. I will show you what happens when you apply Sudoku XY Wing to this puzzle. The cell it solves is not the one you think it could. Click below if you want to give it a go. And with that, it's solving time. First thing you want to see is you got these two ones here. It means there's only one place for one in block six. And then with these two ones, there's two possibilities for one over here in block one. So what I just did is called Snyder Notation. Anytime in a three by three block, you have two possibilities for a candidate. You mark them in case you solve one, you can solve the other right away. Also gives us some hints about some advanced strategies. Okay, we also can look at this one coming across and this one coming down. Give us two possibilities for one in block eight. We move on to the twos. There's not much we can do here. You got these two, you got this two and this two. Two possibilities for a two right there. We'll come back to those. But with the threes, you have this three cutting across here. Leaves us two possibilities for a three in block six. And then in block eight, you have this three coming down with these two threes. Two possibilities for a three in block eight. All right, after that, let's look at the fours. Okay, we got this four, this four, and this four. Only one possibility for a four in block three. And you look in block one, the fours are in the same spot. So whenever you see this situation, we know the ones and fours are limited to the same two cells. That's called a hidden pair. Since they both have to be in the block and they're limited to those cells, nothing else can be there. So we can just mark that as a hidden pair. And then what else we can do with the fours? You got these two fours here and this four, two possibilities for four in block eight. Moving on to the five. Remember how this three came across? There's only two places for three in block six. Well, the five's coming across and doing the same thing. And so that's going to be another hidden pair. Subscribe to Smart Hobbies if you like to solve hidden pairs. This will give us a naked pair right here, two and a seven. And then these two and seven, the hidden pair acts like a pointing pair. Since a two and a seven have to be in these two cells, a two can't be anywhere else along this row. And so we can displace that Snyder 2 and solve this cell now for a 2. And let's look at the 5s. You got 5 here, 2 possibilities for 5 in block 6. Okay? And this 5 coming down, and this 5 cutting across gives us 2 possibilities for 5 here. And they're a pointing pair of 5s. They're going to point out no 5 can be anywhere else along row 9, which now limits these 5s that these two cells in block nine. What's neat is now you see how the five can be in column seven and nine here in block six and column seven and nine here in block nine. Since they can't be in column eight, that means they have to be in column eight up here in block three. And the only possibility for that is this five. And whenever you see this situation, this is called a mini X-Wing, and you can force yourself into this other block to see if you can solve something there. Smarty Party members get exclusive puzzle packs featuring tricks like this. Click on the pinned comment to find out how to join. Okay, after we do that, we have a 2-8 naked pair to finish out column 8. And now we can do some more solving here. Because you have this 5 with this 5. It means the 5 is one of these two cells in block two that's a pointing pair of fives and then with this five coming up and this five is only one place for a five in block one now with these two fives and this five but you also have this pointing pair of fives here the only place for a five in block four is right there awesome and now we have all the fives marked up now let's look at the sevens all right, in block two, you got these two sevens. The only place for seven in block two is right there. And then in block nine, because this seven cuts across, and you have this two eight naked pair. Sevens are limited to two spots there. Now, let's look at the eights. This eight's cutting across row two. So it limits the eights to a pointy pair up there in block two in row one. So an eight can't be there. Since you have an eight here and an eight here, we can solve for an eight now in block three okay let's look at the nines you got two nines here only two possibilities for a nine in block five and now we want to go here to column five because it's going to be hard to find any more 
solves looking around and looking for Snyder notation. So we have five possibilities here in column five. You got a two, three, five, seven, nine. So we need a one, four, six, and eight. And if you like this, share it with a friend and see if they find this particular solve. So we can go one, four, six, eight. Well, if you notice here, one, four, and eight means this actually has to be a six. Awesome. Okay, and so now we can do this one, four, eight right there. And you'll notice this can't be a one and this can't be a four. Let's see what else we can do with the sixes. This six cuts across. There's only two possibilities for a six there. That's going to come in very important here later in the solve. So remember that. All right, after the six, let's look at where a one can be. This is interesting. Because you got column two here, where can a one go? Can't be here because of this one. Can't be here because of this one. And it can't be here because of this one. So this is a naked single one, or excuse me, hidden single one. That means along the column two, there would be a bunch of digits there, but that's the only place for one. So we can solve that, which is going to allow us to displace that Snyder one, solve this cell for a one. And now we have just a four and an eight that we need to figure out there. Okay. And but in the meantime, since we have this one and this one, we can solve for one right here. And with these two ones, we got two possibilities for one and block four. All right, making some more solves here. Let's look at where the twos can be now here in block seven. So you got a two cutting across here, you got two coming down, two possibilities for a two. Not a big deal until you realize that that is a pointing pair of twos that comes across here means this cannot be a two anymore. That's gotta be an eight and that's gonna be your two. Awesome. And we're getting close now to where we need that X, Y wing. We gotta do a couple more things here first. Since we just solved this for an eight, that means this has to be the four and then this cell is gonna be your eight. And then what it leaves for us is you have this eight and the five here. So the only two Places for the five and eight in block eight are right there, which leaves us with a three and a six right here. So this is a three, six naked pair, but it's also gonna be a pointing pair. And I'll show you what that means in a minute. But with this five, eight here, you have the one, two, three, four, nine. These two cells are just gonna be a six or a seven. And now we're gonna get on the hunt for that X, Y wing, because what I just dropped was a bunch of BVCs, by value cells. If we can start linking these up, we're going to be able to create an X, Y wing. So let's look for some restrictions here. Let's look in column two. We've got a one, three, four, five, eight, nine. So we need a two, six, seven. Well, this can be a two, six. This can be a six, seven. And this looks like it could be a two, six, seven. Okay. And then in this block, you have a one, four, and then the five, seven, eight. So we need a two, three, six, nine. Two, three, six, nine. So that can't be a two. And this can't be a two. And then this can't be a three. It doesn't look like much, right? Until you remember what I said about this three, six. And this is probably the step you were missing. Because this three, six is a naked pair, it also acts as a pointing pair because it's in the same row. This cannot be a six. So now we're putting together some BVC. So you want to look for is three paired possibilities for three candidates in a bi-value cell. If you look right here, this two seven, you'll notice you, know, you have a two and a seven in there. It's a bi-value cell. Cool. And in the same block is a six seven, right? It shares one candidate, but it has a new candidate, a six. Now if we can find a third cell that contains a two and a six, we're going to be in business. Now, if we look up this column, you'll notice this cell right here contains a two and a six. So now we have all three paired possibilities of the candidates two, six, and seven. So you got a two, six here, you got a two, seven here, and a six, seven there. One of those cells, the pivot, sees these two orange pinchers. What that means is if this is a two, that cell has to be a six. If this is a seven, that cell has to be a six. So any cell that sees both of these 
you can remove a six because we know it has to be one of the orange cells. This is an XY wing. I cover this strategy in depth in my XY wing tutorial. What it allows us to do is remove these sixes from right here in these two cells. But it's going to solve a cell you don't think it needs to. But the solve it creates is actually over here in block three. Because what we just did is we created a naked pair three and nine within block one. This can no longer be a nine then. And so now you have a two six naked pair, which is also a pointing pair. And so a two six cannot be anywhere else along row three. We can remove a six from that spot and solve this cell over here for a six. I don't think you expected when we did this that you're gonna solve for six over there. But this is what we need to do because now this six allows us solve that for a seven and actually going to solve that cell now for a six and then you remember this three six acts as a pointing pair this can't be a six and because of this six this can't be a six this is going to be a six this place in that snyder five allows us to solve the cell actually not for a seven because the other seven is right there but for a nine but with this seven we can now solve the two and the seven right there with this five we can solve for the three and the five right there and we're going to move up here and go, okay, I can solve for a 9 right there. Looking good. And now we have the 3, 6 here. We need a 2, 7 here. Well, I have a 7 there. So this has got to be a 7. That's got to be the 2. Allow us to disambiguate this 6, 2 right there. And then with these two 6s, I know this has to be now a 6. And with this 6, we can solve for a 6 right here, which is going to allow us to disambiguate that three six that's a very helpful pointing pair for us all right and we're looking across here we need a three nine that's what this is telling me but i got a nine right there so that's got to be your three that's got to be your nine this has got to be your three love disambiguating all of those cells and then this is now a full house there's only one possibility in the block so i can solve that for a two all right and what do we have here it looks like we need a nine and a seven well i got a seven here so here's your seven this place in that snyder nine and then we need an eight nine up here that's got to be your nine this place in that snyder eight which is going to help us solve the five and the eight right there all right and those five means we can solve for the five right there which leaves us with a three here okay what do we have in this full house i don't see a four so i'm going to solve that for a four and that leaves us with a one and a seven. I got my seven there. So here's your seven, here's your one. Allows us to disambiguate that four and the one up there. Awesome. And then with this four, I know this has got to be your four and this is going to be your eight. Allow us to solve this cell for an eight. And our last digit is a nine. See if you can spot the tricky XY wing in this video. Please consider supporting me through my Buy Me a Coffee page. I'd really appreciate it. I want to thank Kraken Sims for this wonderful puzzle. It was a joy to solve, and thank you so much for watching.